I just want to hear it shoot. So beautiful. So beautiful. Hey, so as of recording this, the typewriter has come back to the shop for the first time in over a year. I don't know when this video will go out, but I, I wanted to make a video on this. Chat voted for it. We got a whole charity stream going on, so they're very excited. And uh, let's just talk about what we got going on. So we got the typewriter built here. I ran a poll in chat. Should I do a double crit damage build, a double fire rate build, or just do both? So... Since the longer videos have been very popular on the channel, I was not surprised to see that they wanted to see both. So this will be kind of a two part video. The double fire rate will be later on in the video. And if chat can remember, if chat can remember, I will not bring it up. If they can remember to vote or to mention double or triple crit rating for this build, I'll run a poll and see if they want to extend this video even further. This could be a long one. You probably can see, see the timestamps and whether or not that happened already. As of recording, I am not aware of how that turned out. But either way, double crit damage, reload crit rating is a pretty straightforward build. Affliction is fantastic. We are running a water mission with really great modifiers. So we'll be running nature on this weapon. Pretty super easy. And the loadout I'm going to go over really quickly. So we got... Ranger Deadeye for 50% damage. I ran a, a, another poll. I don't know why. Totally rocking out or blast from the past. I am not shocked to see Totally rocking out one out. Battle beat fumble. It's pretty straightforward. Assault crit damage is nice because it gives me the crit damage bonus to my SMG. And uh, Tactical Assault Sledgehammer actually has a higher base stat total than Beetle Jess. So why not use him in support instead? Assault Ammo Recovery, which is nice. I already have a 50 round drum, but I guess we might as well extend it further. And I didn't want to do Locked and Reloaded because with a 50 round drum, it's going to take me over six seconds to drain that magazine and that's a lot uh, her bonus is only 15 or 15 percent for five seconds that's not that much and i figured some people in chat wanted to see crack shot anyway and with assault ammo recovery buffing my mag size by an effective 31.7 percent that mag size is going to be pretty massive and crack shot will just be constantly buffing my damage which yeah why not so that's part of why i ran uh, fumble so i don't have to use wafers and then switch off my weapon and lose all those stacks so yeah there's the build we're gonna hop right into the game and uh, see how it performs all right, we got the uh, the first crowd of enemies. Now, the typewriter is a weapon that I feel like has been largely put down by the community, and I have contributed that to that for sure. But the reason it's been put down is because it's kind of a mediocre SMG. But as you can see from this, that doesn't even matter. I think the affliction buff helped a ton. Its slow fire rate makes it extremely ammo efficient, meaning I can take really good use of those crack shot shots. I can also make really good use of the ammo that I'm consuming, and I can make use of my magazine before I have to stop and reload. So what that means is I can run up to a crowd of enemies and just tap every single one at a time, and you can see they all just die from affliction. So I talk about this in almost every video it seems like but you can see one bullet is sufficient to eliminate an entire target and that is why when i'm shooting at crowds of enemies it can actually make a lot more sense to just sort of spread your shots out because if you just look at the enemies that got hit by the affliction i can just tap shot individual ones and then die from the damage but they all sort of chip away nice and slowly and it can be a very effective way to make maximum use out of your magazine size and that extra affliction damage can really make the difference so while this isn't the highest dps smg it's taking down an entire encampment like it's nothing. Obviously, I've got the best perks on this and totally rocking out is super strong. But even though this weapon might have a reputation for being kind of a garbage SMG, I actually feel like it might have been put a little too far into the dirt. Again, the Smasher is kind of showcasing exactly what I'm talking about. It's not a top SMG. It didn't even make a showing on my top 10 SMGs list in memory. Maybe Editing Beast can correct me, but it's still perfectly usable. So if you guys see the typewriter in the shop, maybe if I posted this video in time before it actually leaves the shop, maybe if you picked up a copy or have a copy lying around, it is a weapon that's been in the game for a very long time. You might be able to say, hey, maybe this is actually kind of decent. And Beast, didn't the pop of a bear come out as well with the Metal Team Leader Pack? Yes, it did. I'm going to die. Um, that is another weapon that came out with the Metal Team Leader Pack. It's kind of a purchased weapon, so it's not my favorite thing that they did there, but it does mean that um, it was a clone. Uh, Papa Bear was a clone of the typewriter, so they're basically the exact same weapon with a different skin. This is why I brought the Santa's Little Helper, by the way. It's been my favorite weapon recently to one-shot nurses in 160 zones and take out the, uh, the Shielder Husk. Super, super useful for that, and if you're having trouble with an encampment, uh, Santa's Little Helper makes it super easy. Barely an inconvenience. So, yeah, typewriter. Better than you might have thought. I'm going to clean up this encampment, and then I think we're just going to run straight to the defense, because this is going to be a very long video. 
All right, Aura pointed out an encampment that I already died trying to fight, but one of the things I actually changed with the perks was that I don't have damage to afflicted on this weapon. Now, that's definitely an edit. Like, if you don't want double crit damage, I, I think it makes a lot of sense to have that for totally rocking out being in uh, being my team perk, but I did intentionally choose to not have that damage to afflicted, specifically for totally rocking out, but it is definitely something that you could try because it'll be a lot more consistent damage than hoping you crit. That's just one of the many options, but it's kind of up to you. I just realized in the recording that we still have the uh, charity overlay, but eh, that's fine. <laughs> I think it's just a nice way to immortalize in a video where as you're watching this on YouTube, the charity stream is long over, but um, it's still kind of there and going on. Thank you, Quasi. So this build kind of needs Totally Rocket out to be active. I want to showcase this weapon, but run ah, that's a death bomb. Running straight into a crowd of enemies is definitely bad. I considered Survivalist uh, when I was making this loadout instead of crack shot, and that might have been a little bit better, but I'm kind of a survivalist hater. Really not a fan of survivalist. And uh, the healing from that is, is pretty bad. That's why I'm a hater. But I didn't want to use coconuts because I didn't want to be switching off and losing my stacks. And I knew I'd forget. I actually forgot in one of my recent videos. So I made the Cloudburst video. Link to that down below. And I, somebody commented, wasn't the coconuts kind of a dead perk? Because I not only didn't collect any coconuts, but of course, because I didn't collect them, did not eat a single one. A uh, bit of a user error on that one. I certainly stand by coconuts being amazing, but it turns out you do actually need to eat the coconuts for them to actually take effect. So, yeah, I uh, definitely remembered in other videos. So link to the playlist down below if you guys want to check out more of these 1160s. But, uh, you know, I figured I'd just skip them entirely this time and not have to worry about it. Maybe I should be putting some traps down to just thin out some of the uh, other zombies, or I could actually grab the footballs. There we go. Do some pretty decent damage. Like, again, not the strongest SMG in the game. I'm not even trying to claim that it is, but it's not useless. You know, I feel like I myself and lots of people wrote this weapon off as a weapon that's just complete garbage, but it, it's really not. You'll see later with the double fire rate build. I don't know how I'm going to make that build where I'm not reloading constantly. Maybe I will be reloading constantly and I can just use Chaos Agent, but that DPS is actually pretty high. And uh, look at that, a nice little water mission. So I can actually put down some water seeing electric fields, which will do quite a bit more damage, 25% to be exact. And that'll be much more useful against these uh, water only enemies, but that should hopefully activate Tully Rockin' Out. And I realize now why there were no floor traps down. I keep forgetting that this mission is uh, Death Bomb. <laughs> Every time I put down floor freeze, this mission and last, they just completely explode and uh, now that I'm paying more attention to that, I think I'm going to trap a little smarter. Maybe just put the scene electric fields a couple tiles up. Lately, I've actually been using a lot more gas traps too, which has been nice. Gas traps uh, plus floor freeze are pretty strong. But of course, they are in range of the death bomb, and that makes them get eliminated quite a bit faster. I'm going to stand away from them. I'm trying to kill these fatties in specific locations so that the uh, death bombs don't actually impact me. I'll see what we can do against an individual smasher. Not the most amount of damage, obviously. Like... But still pretty good. I don't even have Totally Rockin' Out active, but I like the slow, consistent fire rate. I really do like that. It's not high DPS, right? But it is still pretty decent. And especially if you aim for those headshots, it does uh, more than you might have expected. So yeah, pretty solid first showing. We're going to jump into the second wave uh, right now. Somebody in chat is saying that I said nature or I said water symmetric fields. I meant nature. Okay. Yeah, nature definitely does more to water. And that is more what I'm going for. Uh, I want to activate. Okay. I want to activate totally rocking out and I think more traps down here so my nature not water electric fields can go right here I'll just do like an expensive row of three and hopefully that kills enough enemies often enough to activate to totally rocking out I'm really just trying to farm battle beat here if I can get 10 eliminations with electric fields often enough that'll activate the team perk hopefully 24 7 and then it's kind of a thing where I'm killing off the baby zombies with the uh, traps so that I can do more damage against the bigger targets. Because the smashers like these guys are definitely the ones that are going to be getting through. And with this, my ability is, my uh, team perk is active. And of course, I still have a crit rating perk on this weapon. Uh, even totally rocking out doesn't mean you're going to be critting 100% of the time. But um, it is nice to at least be able to crit when I don't have the team perk active. Which, as you can see, is pretty often. So, Affliction also gives a weapon pretty good range. Because there's no damage drop off with Affliction. Oh, I'm trying to get away from that uh, the, the beehive. And if so, if you just keep pinging them every, you know, six seconds, you can farm quite a bit of damage. We'll look at the health on that guy in a second here, and you can see it's, well, significantly lower. You can work on a couple enemies at once, and, uh, yeah. So in my videos, when I say that Affliction is as good as it is, uh, I honestly believe nowadays it... There are some really good specific six perks. I think I actually... I even have a six perk tier list. Uh, sixth... Sixth... 
whatever six perk tier list uh, where i rank all the six perks and i i don't know which one specifically made it to the s tier off the top of my head but i know affliction was one of them i do believe it is the best common six perk in the game because it just makes normal weapons like this so much better and uh, i'm not really sure how to kill this mini boss um we'll probably have to pull pull out the ravagers because that ricochet is doing a number on me i'm not really sure how my teammates want to deal with that this mission is very wide open and kind of difficult to defend because the death bombs are blowing up everything that we put on the floor and the scene electric fields can only do so much thank you for the ben's war cry in the twitch chat trying to get me hyped up because i don't know how we're gonna take care of this mini boss and while we're trying to kill the mini boss we have smashers coming in from all sides blowing out our walls that can't even survive because of the death bomb seal electric field spam is only so powerful what are we supposed to do honestly turns out it just kind of sorts itself out i'm gonna kill the nurses those throwing not the nurses the uh, the throwing thoughts are definitely being a bit of a nuisance and we can't kill the mini boss with affliction alone by the way, one of the reasons that I actually supercharged my uh, Ranger Deadeye is because that will up the ability damage and it'll make my teddies do more damage, which is nice. Um, but usually when I'm showcasing a weapon, I don't want to be using teddy, so I don't often get as much use out of that. But having more health is uh, super useful, as you've seen. All right. We're going to go in on this guy right now. Heal a teammate. Heal myself back to full. Easy pot shot. Ah! Is Brightcore better than Sunbeam on the Explosion Stormblade? Yes! In my Stormblade video, link down below, uh, you actually do want Brightcore on that specific weapon. Typically, I prefer Sunbeam because you do more weapon damage. It is better for weapon damage. But in that specific build, the Stormblade itself isn't actually doing all that much. And that, uh, that damage is really, really coming from the six perk where you're just farming explosions. You're swinging as fast as you can, activating the explosion over and over and over, and... That is a case where Brightcore is actually uh, significantly, uh, kind of significantly better. It's like 10%, 7%, somewhere in there, but it is better and it does make it last longer, which I think is important because with a weapon that you are spamming attacks with, you are lowering the durability faster than normal use and uh, Brightcore makes it last longer, swing faster, and therefore you do output more damage. So in that one specific instance, Brightcore is better, but I'll link my video down below comparing Sunbeam and Brightcore if you guys kind of want a more complete story. I do talk about that exact difference with melees where there is a whole graph in that video, a chart that I show that a friend made uh, showcasing the damage difference with Brightcore versus Sunbeam. Pretty interesting. All right, we're back with the second loadout. So double fire rate shoots about 15 times per second. So I'm actually using assault ammo recovery to increase that as long as I can and quick fingers because I figured I should put a mag size perk on the typewriter so I could shoot as long as possible and quick fingers will help me instantly reload. We've got mad tidings on there, especially because this mag size with assault ammo recovery on top of the mag size perk, bringing this up to 87 rounds. The Assault Ammo Recovery brings it up to about 117 rounds, which is about 8 seconds of uptime before I'm going to have to reload, which is about how long it takes for the phase shift to come back. So, I am sticking with Ranger Deadeye for that number that I just shared. It's about an 8 second firing time, which is only about half of Gunblazer Southie. I wanted to change his loadout completely and use Gunblazer and get his 104% damage bonus, or 105, but 4 seconds is not enough. He'll be dead half the time, and that's basically a 50% damage bonus. Might as well just get that from every shot from ranger dead eye pretty easy and simple so yeah let's just hop right in and uh basically be a helicopter i just want to hear it shoot so beautiful so <laughs> beautiful all right we're coming in with a double fire rate build i'm not even sure what i want to shoot at first i'm gonna start with the mist monster let's just see <laughs> look at that damage <laughs> this is so this is so crazy stupid this is ridiculous. This is basically just like a giant. Oh, wow. I'm still running totally rocking out. I kind of forgot about that. Um, I don't have any crit damage perks on this. As you might have seen, I changed it to damage to afflicted. I probably should have kept the crit damage, but honestly, this is not a practical build. This isn't even like a fastest fire rate build. This is just because chat voted for it and I wanted to see how it would go. Uh, the DPS on paper is higher than you might think for the double fire rate, but like it's not a practical build if it was like even the highest fire rate build i would have made this bright core not sunbeam but you know what we're just having fun so uh yeah this is this is great i'm probably just gonna cut to the defense now so yeah we'll uh, we'll see you then all right as always i said defense but you know i can't pass up a smasher <sighs> this is so expensive 
<laughs> this is so expensive. Now, that reload that I just did does trigger a reload. Uh, that uh, Chaos Agent does trigger a reload event. So that does cancel out crack shot. But you can actually see the numbers getting bigger and bigger. 26, 26.9, 26.7, or I'm sorry, 27. That number is basically crack shot, just making this weapon stronger and stronger. And I, I love it. I love it. All right, I'm not going to pass up the encampment either. Let's see how this goes. So I'm going to want to focus on the bigger targets. And I am actually surprisingly... Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm actually surprisingly mobile with this build, too, because... We are reloading with phase shift, so we can get around nice and easy. Using Santa's little helper right away. No BS on this one. We're just going to take care of all the shielders, ping everything, absolutely everything that we can with the affliction. Take out the taker before it can attack us. Ah, this is actually a very, very lively build. This is far, far more effort than I was prepared for. I see that football in there. Let me just snake my way through. Oh, the affliction just killed like a whole crowd of them all at once. So beautiful. Shoot the blasters from far away. Reload quickly. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Still can't get to the football because they're all hoarding in that general area. Oh, it's like losing a sporting match. I really thought I had that encampment. All right, I'm not even going to worry about this. We're going to go straight to the defense. Look at the state of this defense. I got the tire traps on the slope because I can't help myself. These are all facing that way or that way. Uh, basically, you place them backwards and the enemies will stumble backwards. It's uh, very effective. You can see them rolling back up the hill in certain instances. It's pretty beautiful. Then we've got a bunch of traps down here just to farm up the totally rocking out, which again is still active for some reason, but that's all right. Uh, we're not going to be critiquing this build too much. There are lots of ways to... Wow! That is... That is doing some good damage. That is killing clearly faster than the double crit damage, actually. Whoa! <laughs> That's actually so good! What? What on earth? Is that, like, crack shot carrying? Is it totally rocking out? Is it all of the above? This is beautiful. I love it. Maybe it's the damage to afflicted because... Uh, I know that the um, crit damage can only be effective X amount of times. And it does level out to be about the same, but... That damage to afflicted is every single bullet, and you can sometimes crit. And uh, when Totally Rockin' Out is active, that Affliction can crit as well. So I don't, um, I don't know. Somebody recommended uh, First Shot Rio once because apparently she can make it so that your crit damage, or I'm sorry, your Affliction can guaranteed crit and that can add up to be a ton. Either way, Quasi, thank you for the bits. This is just beautiful. I love this. A uh, little hot tip for the uh, tire traps. I've explained this a lot in my tire trap series. Link to that video series down below. I'll just link whatever the first video, but um, if you face the tire traps and the four freeze in a certain direction, it can be significantly more useful. But yeah, it's uh, on top of those traps. It's just this is just great. This is just pure carnage. Sometimes I don't even know what to say because. This isn't even like a practical build. Again, Bright Core would have been better if you want pure fire rate plus urban assault. If you want pure fire rate, I do have a video on not only the fastest firing SMG in the game, the Monsoon, which kicked off my kind of double rate fire rate series, but also the Viper. And uh, the Viper video didn't do as well, but still a super, super fun weapon because that weapon reloads incredibly quickly. It's like one second or something. Plus it has the 19 fire rate. It, it's crazy, crazy, crazy fast. And uh, Definitely a fun video if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, this is more of like a unofficial addition to that series because while this isn't strictly labeled as a Fire 8 video, I don't believe. Uh, Marketing Beast has not really taken the reins on this video yet, but I uh, figured this would be a good enough addition just to say that it's similar to those videos, you know? Yeah, somebody in chat was interested in the uh, interesting weapons. Like, for example, weapons that are really strong that you wouldn't even guess. And I told him right away that Clax. Clax is honestly so good. It might be my recommended mini boss killer. I know I mentioned that in like my ghost pistol video, but that video is not live yet. So I'm not sure if I can plug that. Uh, I haven't even edited it yet. So um, I, uh, someday in the future, maybe. Or if it's already on the channel, then link below. <laughs> Yeah, I sometimes record videos out of order. For example, today I'm covering a weapon that just came back to the shop unexpectedly. So I already had my planned videos to go out in this time, but I might have moved this video up in advance. But I'm also doing a charity stream today, so I'm not really sure if I'll be editing any videos. And uh, it just gets complicated. I, I feel like I have so many videos going up on my channel that sometimes I can hardly keep up with them. And I guess that's a good problem to have. You guys just get to enjoy the, the fruits of all my hard working. I, I would hope if you guys actually enjoy the videos, then, uh, then great. Um, some people just say mean things and it, it hurts my feelings. And then 
and then it drowns out the nice comments. So if you guys have ever actually enjoyed a video of mine or anybody else's, leave a nice comment. Uh, YouTubers do read those and we do care. We are people too. Okay, all right. This has become like a help circle. I don't need it, it's fine. We're gonna move on to these smashers that are hopefully over here. I'm just seeing a lot of nurses and oh my God, the vacuum tube bow. I wanna do a vacuum tube bow video. I'm probably gonna be recording that in this session. You guys on YouTube might not see that video for a while, but I want it to happen. Vacuum tube bow, uh, Cloudburst bow went up on the channel. Uh, uh, Xenon bow. Xenon bow is showcased in the, uh, what is it? The Zenith video, but it needs its own showcase because it's it's so freaking strong. Have you guys heard about the Xenon bow? Definitely a sleeper pick that absolutely nobody has used and uh, highly recommend checking it out. I'm going to save Archer and these guys are probably going to have to work on the smokescreen mini boss again. That's twice now that I haven't been able to participate in a mini boss because my weapon is useless against it, but that's fine. I, I have very capable teammates and I'm sure they can uh, help me out with whatever. More for the bits. Subtle cry for help. Honestly, I had a guy... He called me a fart sniffer. I was like, what? He, he was calling me a fart sniffer because I don't post any guides on my channel. I'm like, what? How could you say that? Have you only been subscribed for a month? Look at the playlist of Save the World guides. I posted 440 Save the World guides at the time of recording. I, what? What am I supposed to do? I was very confused, by the way, why that chaos agent didn't reload. That chaos agent activation didn't reload my weapon. I ran out of ammo. <laughs> I didn't mention this at all yet, but the durability on the typewriter from the last mission. Look at this. Is it favorited and at the top? No, I don't even think that's how that works. Yeah, look at the durability on this. I used about 40% of that weapon last game, and that was just the normal eight fire rate. So yeah, I don't know if this weapon just has a low durability or if that's normal if you spam an SMG like that. I don't really look at durability that often. Uh, usually I recycle weapons after I record these because I record more videos and then my inventory fills up and it's a giant mess. Even now I've only got like three spots open, but you know what? I like the fun weapons. I like to uh, I like to showcase the, the cool stuff and that's just the cost of doing business is an inventory that is endlessly full. Oh, there's a nice little T-pose for you. No, I'm too far off the defense. Thank you, Epic, for buffing hoverboards. This is gonna make it super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Wait, have I already quoted pitch meetings in this video? I think we have a limit of one per video. Eh. Limiting pitch meeting quotes is tight. Okay, all right, we gotta get the nurse killed and then everything just dies. Look at that Xenon. Nope, look at this vacuum tube bow. It's just doing all the damage. I love it. I was using that in the first 160 we ran today and I, I want it. I want to do it so bad. Oh, sneaking up behind the Riot Husky. Easy kills, easy claps. Activating Totally Rockin' Out, actually doing meaningful damage. I really think it's that Affliction buff, where with Totally Rockin' Out active, almost every Affliction crit is probably happening, and that just kills a whole crowd of enemies with ease. Super comfortable. I don't know why I just crouched when trying to sprint. It's a lot going on today, and I'm barely keeping up with it. Well, the mission ended while I was on the ground, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want more of these, comment down below. I really enjoy making these, so let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, yeah, take it easy, get some ice cream, and uh, have a good day. It's going to be like a 45-minute video. Yeah, well, hey, you know, he said it in chat, 3x crit rating time. I just needed one person in chat to remember to extend this video beyond the true, the, the fake ending. And, uh, well, I guess we'll do it. So, yeah, with like 300 people watching, this is not even fair. I, okay, I was bound to have one person remember. Swap it out the double fire rate, crit rating. I can't believe I'm doing this. Crit rating, I cannot believe I'm doing this. Crit rating, <laughs> what is this build? I'll put reload on this. This weapon has no damage perks. Just the element, but it's critting 58% of the time. So Aura wants to run boom base. He did it last game. So I guess we'll keep totally rocking out. I have to put a crit damage hero in the lead. I have to. I could do sledgehammer because it's an SMG, but I really like the idea of just keeping that outlander fluidity. So I might do beetle Jess in the lead. I'll figure out a loadout and get back to you guys. All right, I ran a poll. Chat decided on beetle Jess lead. So we've got totally rocking out. Battle beat fumble, of course. Assault damage in the support, just to buff the damage even more. Assault ammo recovery, just to extend that mag size. We got reload on there, so we won't need chaos agent. And then we got mad tidings once again. I want to say, just as a warning, this video, this build, I should say, makes no sense. The the uh, Let me talk a bit about diminishing returns. If you want to cut to the gameplay, timestamps are down below. But if you guys want to learn more about the game, 
the way that crit rating works, I'm going to pull out my spreadsheet middle of recording is it is kind of a declining value. So here's an old Reddit post. I'll link it down below. You guys can see that crit rating is on the left and crit chances on the right. You'll note these numbers are not exactly the same. In fact, 25 crit rating gives you 25% crit chance. That's a terrible example. But when we get up to 40, crit rating, you're only getting 33.5% crit chance. So a typical crit rating perk is 30. That is giving you a 28% damage bonus. That is why with a lot of the weapons in the game, like the Siege Breaker having a base 10% crit chance, you will see 38% chance to crit on many, many weapons. Sometimes you'll have the, the extra weapons that have a base 15%. That's like the Hemlock will have a 43% chance to crit. That is where that comes from. But when you add another 30 on top of that, you only have a 60 crit rating. So you're only adding 41%. So now you just jumped from getting a 28% chance to crit from one crit rating perk to a 13% chance per crit from that second crit rating perk. That second crit rating perk only giving you an extra 13% chance to crit is less than a damage perk, way less than a crit damage perk, and that is why it is never recommended to have more than one crit rating perk in terms of damage. If you're running like a Zenith build or something, okay, you can get away with quirky builds that require a higher chance to crit. It can maybe make sense, but for damage from the weapon itself, you only ever want one crit rating perk maximum because even worse than that when we get to the third crit rating perk we're only getting a 48 percent the jump from the second crit rating to the third is seven seven percent crit chance from one perk that's nothing that's that's nothing that's such a tiny bonus and that is why that crit rating will get stacked on even harder so we're gonna have a 90 crit rating on top of the 60 from totally rocking out which brings us to 150 which is only a 56.5 percent crit chance that's nothing then you add the 12 from boom base and it doesn't even show the number anymore because the person who made this chart said it doesn't even matter past this point and that's why that curve it's like your your your, your chance to crit goes way up and then it, it levels out hard it's so worthless and that is why typically you don't even want a crit rating build in a pure totally rocking out build although i did it earlier because like i said totally rocking out is not always active so this build makes no sense mathematically but without further ado let's hop in a game and try it out so even though i said triple crit rating makes no sense i figured it would make sense to run at least a crit damage perk if i am going to be critting this often but look at it chunk it's you know pretty freaking bad this is what i said i said it would be bad <laughs> like the damage perks that we got from the, the damage that we get from the fire rate speed was really nice the damage that we got from the extra crit damage is really nice this is the worst build in the video that that's why it's at the end that's why i didn't even want to record this until chat recommended it but like i i, I don't know what you expected so if this is a testament to how bad boom base is my crit chance went from 58 to uh Oh, 71.5, because we got the freaking Totally Rockin' Out active. But really, only a 70% crit chance with Totally Rockin' Out, triple crit chance, and Boom Base all stacked together. Boom Base brought me to 61, by the way, over 58. I didn't realize Totally Rockin' Out had been active. I put uh, Tire Traps and uh, Sin Electric Field over there. This build is going to be critting, well, 70% of the time, which is kind of insane. They're trying to give me Ear Splitter buffs, which I appreciate. That I don't think uh, has any influence on crit chance, but... This is so dumb. This is so full. You know what, what's crazy though is as dumb as it is as wasteful as it is Crits do so much in this game that it's actually kind of viable like versus a smasher right here. It's Not impressive damage. I think the triple crit damage bobcat did a hell of a lot better damage But that's triple crit damage not crit rating right, you know, so and uh, the, the, the other thing is triple crit damage with a totally rocking out build. No crit rating perks and no boom base can still hit about a 60% chance to crit. That's, uh, I think that's the best way to illustrate that is with all of these buffs, I'm still only about 13% higher than like a regular build with triple crit damage stacked. So if you have triple crit damage and you're critting for, what's the Bobcat? What was it doing? 680% probably, something like that. That 680% chance to, that 680% bonus damage, 60% uh, of the time, is way more than 275%, 73% of the time. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm not surprised at all that this is kind of a pea shooter right now. You'd think critting almost every shot would matter so much, but no. See, it turns out doing more damage slightly less often is uh, the way to go. In fact, for the longest time, I've recommended um, 
fire rate and damage builds. Um, I, I don't stand by that as much as my early days, like the original Bobcat Best Perks video. I remade that, so I'll link that down, the new one down below. But uh, the original Bobcat Best Perks, I actually recommended fire rate damage. And that's because on paper, it actually is the same as a crit build. Uh, Aura, your boom base went away. I'm just letting you know I'm going to mute. That was my base. Oh. Um, so I guess, uh, yeah, that was his base. He knows. Anyway, so... I used to recommend fire rate and damage because on paper it did the same as crit rate and crit damage. However, in reality, you're just shooting more to achieve the same damage output and you're reloading more often. And if you factor in the time spent reloading, it, it is typically better to have a crit rate and crit damage build. So in that instance, you are shooting slower, uh, critting uh, more often than you otherwise would, but you're critting for a lot more enough to actually make up for it. And in a typical build, like a shotgun or a sniper build, like a typical shotgun or sniper build, I would not recommend crit builds typically, um, but um, that's because those weapons shoot so slow that it doesn't make sense. Uh, there are exceptions like the Husbuster and the Ground Pounder. They shoot fast enough to where a crit build is perfectly fine. And their damage is so high when they don't crit that it basically doesn't even matter. But for a weapon like the Spyglass, I could never sign off on a crit build because you're shooting once and then reloading with every shot. That's terrible. In fact, even in my pot shot best perks, I didn't recommend a crit build normally because of that same exact reason. However, as you guys know, the damage on the pot shot is so high when you're not critting that it's kind of fine. And you do kind of need that crit damage if you're really going to go up against a mini boss. And we got the final wave. There is no way I am extending this video again. I personally want to go record the vacuum tube video, which I can't link because it's not even probably edited by the time you're watching this. But I want that video done because it's awesome. And this is the perfect mission for it. Like if I was ever going to do a vacuum tube bow video, this mission is beautiful. Nice tropical zone. So the map is nice and open almost every time. There's no healing death burst. There is death bomb. But you can stand back with a bow. You're gonna be perfect. You're gonna be perfectly fine. There's no death burst. There's no uh, acid pools to be afraid of. It's a super clean mission that uh, just lets the vacuum tube bow do all that it can do. So yeah, if you thought the cloud burst not needing a tunnel was accurate, you should see the vacuum tube bow because that weapon, whew, weapon's great. I don't know why I'm acting like this is some secret weapon people don't know about. I'm sure everybody here has seen the vacuum tube bow, but like. I'm still going to check it out either way because it's awesome. You know, it's funny. Are we actually going to finally get a, a trap vulnerable mini boss? That's three missions in a row where I just can't even do anything against the mini boss. That's just honestly fine. I, I thought it would be very funny if the one time I could actually do damage to a mini boss. I, it was the one when I was running this derpy build, but this is completely fine. If anybody somehow doesn't know, trap vulnerable mini... All right. I was going to box it in with broadsides, but of course I just... Uh, couldn't get fortunate enough for that, but he also has the Volcanic, which is kind of a problem. I figured we'd have enough traps around for him to just be taken care of normally, but turns out uh, he's not in the right area for that. But yeah, easy broadside, takes it out super easy, barely an inconvenience. Um, mini bosses like that are my favorite. I think the uh, Trap Vulnerable is, is the easiest to take care of. We had one earlier today in Ventures where uh, I was underleveled and I think I was farming or eating or something and Ty asked if we should just shove it off the map and I was like no 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 we can try and kill it but it was trap vulnerable so we just walked it into our already placed broadsides and it died honestly faster than if you would have pushed it off the map so yeah they're my favorite unless they have building blocker in which case you can't really do what I just did and things get a little tricky but yeah as I was saying earlier I want to like walk over these footballs but like I go from 61 to yeah an 11 extra percent chance to crit is <laughs> it's, it's not nothing, all right? It's not nothing, but uh, it's more like critting seven times out of ten instead of six. That overall damage bonus is <laughs> pretty insignificant, but you know what? Whatever. Still got to do what I can to make this build as strong as possible because uh, if all we're specking into is crit rating, then we got to use what we have at our disposal, you know? You know? Another smasher kill. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, it's uh, you know what pot shot user stole the fire and I'm, I'm not surprised I could I could stare at these smashers for a while before they even go anywhere. This is this is so bad I'm just gonna call it early. Thank you guys so much for watching for these extended Extended extra video. I really appreciate you hanging out if you guys made it this far I want to comment, let's see, uh, if you guys made it this far, you should say the typewriter with triple crit rating is the best loadout ever, no cap, hashtag for real. And you can type it FR if you want, all right? I'm, I'm going to look for comments like that to know how many people actually made it to the end, because uh, that's not something I would ever say. So, yeah, uh, if you guys enjoy these, comment down below. I really, I, like I said in the fake outro, I really do enjoy making these. So let me know what you guys want to see, because that really, really guides me in what I could make, because I have a lot of fun 160 ideas, and what you guys want to see is the only way I can actually break down what to record next. So, yeah, take it easy. Have a
a good day and uh, go go get some ice cream. All right, you've earned it. And then.